So I wasn't expecting really much of a Modern Warfare 3 reveal today, but we did indeed get a pretty big one of that, with zombies being revealed via a new four minute cinematic sequence in which it showed off the general plot, some of the narrative direction, and more. So today we're gonna show off that and break down a bit of what you need to know and beyond through an accompanying blog post. As we go along, drop your thoughts down below on what you think of this here. Are you looking forward to what we'll be playing with zombies come early November? Not so much. What are the case? Drop your thoughts down below, but if you enjoyed the video, you find it at all insightful, do me a favor and drop a like on it. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing to stay video with all things Modern Warfare 3. We've still got some Modern Warfare 2 stuff with Season 6 upcoming next week and things like X Defiant and other FPS games. We've got a lot up on deck this fall, so if you'd like to join the community, I'd love to have you. And finally, check out my friends over at Gamer Advantage for the best blue light glasses on the market, but more on them a little later. For now, let's jump into this Modern Warfare 3 Zombies reveal. So, breezing through, we're going to be talking over this cinematic as it plays in the background, pointing out specific things, but if you guys want to see it in its unedited, true raw format, I'll leave the link down there in the description below where you guys can check it out on the official Call of Duty page, but we might be jumping through through some stuff cutting here and there, but I want to just point out the key specific stuff for you. So the perspective that you see here of this is coming from the PMC group Terminus Outcome. That's the group we were told about around the reveal and the briefing that myself and other creators and press attended at Sledgehammer. But these are your sort of muscle for hire baddies that are descending on this town kind of guns a blazing. During this, we see it's an extraction where you first see a group of people entombed in a building's wall, sort of cut off in a wall put over where that was there so there wouldn't be any trace of there being a room in the first place. But the first discovery that we see of these people around this table is, well, one of the deceased is Gregory Weaver from the Black Ops universe, and he's our first crossover we'll see out of this cutscene. But we see him, which RIP Weaver, we see that there's a machine then also housing vials of Ethereum, and that's apparently what they were looking for. And when I say they, I mean our bad guys of Jack Fletcher, leader of the Terminus Outcome PMC, and one Victor Zakayev, you know, the guy who somehow survived a 100 plus foot drop down a missile silo and presumably rocket burns from the ignition here. Yeah, that's Zakayev. In the wise words of a Poe Dameron, somehow Zakayev returned. But however he survived, Zakayev is the baddie here that we now have to worry about, using these vials as weapons or seemingly intending to do so. And just like our theory yesterday, if I'm putting money on it, this guy's entire character arc seems to be to try and carry out the name of his father's wishes, which like, man, you already failed to enact World War III once. Let the daddy issues go. All this, though, leads to an extraction that goes foobar, and the only way that Zakayev can salvage the situation and get out of this with his and Jack Fletcher's lives is to throw one of the vials that they just found to create an incursion. You see this whole situation where it's honestly a really cool sequence of rendered cinematics where you see the cracking individually in slow-mo and then just the wave of Ethereum go out and infect everyone in its path. It infected everyone in the vicinity and turned them into, well, you probably guessed it, zombies. That's something that then you see the sort of absolute sheer chaos while Zakayev and Fletcher are in that LTV. They then drive off with the remaining Ethereum vials. Now, that's something that is interesting because obviously you have now an infection in that town and two guys that just seemingly got away. But then they cut to Soap, Laswell, and Ravanov, our second character crossover. I do still think it's really cool to see Black Ops and Modern Warfare characters together. And like, I get their shared universe now and it's been a thing being more and more established since Modern Warfare 2019, but it's still so cool to me to see. But with this, we of course learned that we're now taking part in Operation Deadbolt. You're trying to contain everything with the infection. You have Soap, yourself, Ravanov, and Maybe that's it. Maybe it's a trios only mode. Maybe it's a simple setup for what you're doing. You have unnamed operators like we've seen before in zombies. But either way, we end up seeing that that's just the setup for where you're going to start Operation Deadbolt. Honestly, that sort of fly-in sequence might actually even be like the intro cutscene for that. I mean, you go right into the point where you get off the helicopter and you're infilling. So who knows? But anyways, this also gave us potentially our first look at the map here that we'll see for not only zombies, but also for Warzone. You don't see much, it's blurred off in the background, very sort of exposed in terms of sunlight, but it does look to be desert much more than anything else. So that theory where people are thinking, oh, it's, it's Urzikstan rather than Los Almas, which honestly now I'm kind of subscribing to as well. Seeing the TAC map from above in our zombies briefing at Sledgehammer pre-reveal of Modern Warfare 3, Seems like that's actually going to be the case here. But that said, that's what we learned and saw directly out of the actual cutscene itself. But let's talk about this at a top level. Let's dive deeper into some subjects. First thing I gotta say, man, 
that cutscene was just gorgeous. I do think that ever since Advanced Warfare, Sledgehammer has had the best cinematics. And granted, that's for a reason. They're all pre-rendered cinematics, meaning that it's not something that's in-game or in-engine footage, but instead is genuinely like a mocap sequence that is rendered out fully to be as realistic as possible. You have actual actors acting out that situation, and it's not just something that's in-game character models. Like, when you come across them in-game, they just queue up a movie or video file rather than play out the game in-engine and in real time. All games since Modern Warfare 2019 have started to embrace this and utilize them more, and man, I think that's awesome. I think it brings the scale of the visuals up even more. To me, at least, it immerses me even further because it does feel almost real. But again, that's just me. Plot, it's pretty straightforward here at this one. Terminus Outcome and Zakayev have been looking to weaponize the last bits of Ethereum, and we're going to have to stop them. And that's stuff we've discussed before, but now we've also seen fully and publicly confirmed that we'll also see this as an extraction-based game mode and not wave-based. That was something that came along in the accompanying blog post, though I'd be curious if we do get any wave-based stuff at any point in the future in post-launch seasons, or if zombies will just be sort of handled like how DMZ was, where we get mission resets every single season like that, and maybe an Easter that goes along in different capacities like that, while also getting smaller sub areas to contain and stuff like that. How we saw Ashika Island, Vondel, Koshi Complex, Building 21, all added in under DMZ, but they're all different infill locations. Maybe, but we'll have to wait and see. The only thing in terms of like narrative and plot that I'm very curious to see what this sets up is some more era jumping. And what I mean by that is that we just saw with Cold War's Dark Ether storyline and the kickstart of that, that we jumped to then a prequel in Vanguard Zombies a few decades before the Omega and Requiem struggle. It seems like we'll probably be doing that again here with another prequel to follow within the presumed Black Ops 6. Black Ops 5 was codenamed for Black Ops Cold War, so just bear that in mind. And just talking in generalities, but Treyarch's next game, by all leaks, it seems to be back in the 90s. So not only will we be going back in time literally, but it seems like that could then set up the story for how we got to the point where, well, Weaver's dead in an entombed room with three other other strangers trying to keep that Ethereum away from the rest of the world. There's a very big gap from where we left off with the beating of the Forsaken and then picking up with Zakayev and Fletcher finding that Ethereum. That's a big gap and a lot of stuff seemingly went down in between that, so I'm assuming that's going to be the case here once again next year. But anyways, that's stuff that's just different story for a different day, perhaps. Just bear that in mind. And the final thing I'm going to touch on here is just a quick little note for anybody that likes extra rewards and you know you're going to pick up the game. Again, do what you want. I don't care if you buy this game. Don't buy it. It's just entirely up to you. But just simply relaying information, there is now a Zombies Ghost pre-order skin available that if you pre-order digitally, has to be digitally, you do end up getting this skin available for immediate use in Modern Warfare 2, Warzone, and in Modern Warfare 3 come the game launch. If you do this before Season 6 is launched, it will be something that you can use it as of Season 6 and September 27th, whenever that goes live. But you have from now until November 10th when the game launches to do so in order to end up getting that skin at any point. But anyways, that is where we're at here at this. That is the zombies reveal in terms of the new opening cinematic it seems and setting up the world of modern warfare 3 zombies and honestly quite like the look of that i was a little skeptical on if i'd be interested in zombies this year and honestly when it comes to the gameplay loop maybe that's still the case but lore wise i'm in for it man that's they got me hooked that was a good sequence i think at the very least i'm gonna be paying attention to the story whether or not i play it too much on my own end we'll see how that all plays out with the gameplay actually feels like but story I'm invested. But for now, that is where I'm going to call it. Before we wrap everything up, make sure you have my friends over at Gamer Advantage for 10% off your entire order for what I think are the best blue light glasses on the market. They just recently launched their Diablo frames, which if you guys are like me, you love aviator style glasses, these are the frames for you. But if you guys want to check them out, honestly, I can't say enough about them in the two to three years that I've been working with them and using their product now at this point. So while I can't convey all the information in terms of clinical study, the science behind everything, what I can say is they're absolutely the most comfortable, lightweight, and durable frames of any glasses I've used. Used. So if you guys want to learn more, honestly, I just recommend even checking out the information down there in the description below over on their website. But if you guys want to pick something up, make sure you use code ESPRESSO for 10% off your entire order as well. Linked down below once again. But that said, that's what I call it. So let me know your thoughts down below on what you guys think of this zombies reveal via cinematic. Are you guys looking forward to it? Maybe not so much. Whatever the case, drop your thoughts. But if you enjoyed the video, you found it at all insightful, do me a favor and drop a like on it. If you're new to the channel, you'd like to stay up to date with all things Modern Warfare 3, some more Modern Warfare 2 stuff as we gear up for Season 6 here next week, and other FPS content like X Defiant and some other retrospective content. I'd love to have you in the community. But for now, thanks so much for watching. Honest Espresso. I'll see you later. Take care and peace.